Hello, Jamie from Inky and Scrappy, sharing with you today a slimline scene card featuring Lawn Fawn's Very Rainy Day and Here For You Bear stamp set. I started by coloring my images and cut them out with the coordinating dies or the Brother Scan and Cut. And I'm going to be using Lawn Fawn's stitched slimline stackables, I guess you would call them, today for my card base and the panel that goes on top of it. So I'm starting with some Nina Classic Crest Solar White cardstock in 110 pounds. And I'm going to kind of figure out how I want, how much of that I want grass and how much I wanted sky. And then the second piece or the second rectangle down will be what I'm actually going to build my scene on. And then my grass piece and this piece right here is actually from Trinity Stamps. I want to say it's their Slimline Scene Builder set, but it might be their other Slimline. Um, I think it's like a backdrop builder or something like that. I will try to list and link them on my blog post. And so I started with the middle piece for my slimline piece here and then I'm going to go and I die cut that plaid piece about halfway on both sides so it'll banquet you know it'll end up being on both sides and then the other piece will be in the middle and because this is super thin paper I am using the advanced tape runner or glider today And then I don't want it to cover, I don't want that middle piece to cover up too much of my plaid because the plaid really was the inspiration for my coloring. And I'm trying to get it centered and I don't think it's exactly centered and you can't really tell once it's all together because it's very thin on the outside anyways. And you'll notice that that rectangle piece was cut off a little bit. So I did not realize it before I cut it out that it was hanging off the edge. And so I thought about recutting it, but I'm putting grass on the bottom anyways. It does make lining it up a little bit of a pain in the butt when I do, but I just follow the grid lines and it turned out just fine. And so I am using some Distress Oxides for my clouds, and then I go over both of those. So I did Savage Spatina and Speckled Egg for my clouds, and then I went over it with Stormy Sky along the outsides to darken it and then a little bit over the top to kind of blend them all together and then I'm using pumice stone here for my sidewalk and then I take that pumice stone pad and then just tap the edge of the pad on there to kind of give the illusion or the look of the seams in the sidewalk and then just blended those out I'm gonna run that to the die cut machine and cut that out and then come back in with a little bit of black soot and just darken the edges a little bit there and I'm trying to figure out I want it to kind of go with my grass but I didn't cut it exactly perfect but being that it's a full scene you can't really tell where one you know if it's a little bit thicker in one spot or the other and then I'm coming in on this piece I went with shabby shutters and old paper for my grass and it kind of matches the green that is in that background pattern paper I thought twisted citron was going to be too limey and bright for this one and so here's me just trying to you know wiggle it so it's about it's about even I couldn't tell the difference by my eyeballs, so I figured it was good. And then I will add that piece to the background panel that is already on the card. You can do it this way, or you can wait and chop off your stuff and then glue it to the background. I just decided to do it that way this time around. I have no rhyme or reason, I just do what I do. So I am just 
adding in the pieces here. I wasn't going to use the little bear from here for you bear because it was a, you know, it was a special freebie with the purchase of 60 when they did their spring release. And so I wasn't planning on it, but I decided I needed a third little bear and it kind of fills in my rainbow there. I don't know why I wanted to do pink raindrops and puddles, but I think that's how I colored them in the airport when I was coming back from vacation. So that's what I went with. And I'm usually not a pastel, I don't know, I usually like bright and bold or more bright and bold or the the muted but still vibrant colors. And so I have gone with the pastels for my bubbles for my little duck card. And so I was like, they were really pretty. And so I was like, oh, I should do a pastel card. So this is totally not my normal color scheme of things. Usually I'm very, you know, just a lot louder when it comes to color. <laughs> and so I'm kind of adding um, three different levels of foam tape. I kind of have them all sitting out there. They all kind of have a different height difference. So just depending upon how much height I wanted something to have, like if it was further back or further forward, I used a different foam adhesive for it. And then adding in those splashes where I felt they would be. And some of these were cut with the Brother Scan and Cut, and it doesn't always cut perfectly. Or kind of like when you die cut, you don't get it lined up perfectly. And so I usually, if it's like way off one way or the other, I will slim down the side that is overly white. And it just kind of helps make it look a little bit more even or I don't know it kind of makes it mesh a little bit better with the rest of the images I can't tell once a card is all the way done like the difference between it being on the brother scan and cut or die cut I mean the die cut ones have that nice rounded edge a little bit more but when I put those images on a card like this you can't really tell that from the other unless you're really looking for it. So I don't mind mixing and matching when it comes to those things. And so I did color in the little frog there to match my scene. I had decided I needed a pop of green. I think the only rainbow color that I didn't add was orange. And I just ran out of bears, to be honest. And to help make the scene look like it's continuing on, cutting some of those big puddles in half and then using the other half on the other side of the card. Nobody's going to know that you cheated, you know, your colored images. I hate throwing away things that I colored. I spent time to color it, so I'm going to use it if I can. And that's one way that I, I do that a lot. I think it saves a little bit of time in the end. And so for the sentiment on this one, I hadn't actually thought of anything until I was ready to do the top half of this. And so I liked the when it rains, make a splash. I thought it kind of went with all the puddles and the splashes on this card. And then I am using um, VersaFine Onyx Black ink. For my stamping here and I just find it gives a very crisp stamp like one and done sort of thing opposed to some of the other ones the other thing that is good is to make sure your other like my Mon Fon jet black ink I noticed it wasn't stamping the greatest and then I re-inked it and it works beautifully again it's a one and done thing so if you're not getting great image impressions with your stamp pads make sure that they are 
nice and juicy or re-ink them. And then I'm just going to trim these down and then I will add, I thought they were too stark white. And so I just went in with my blender brush that I'd used for the clouds. And then I just added a little tint of color with whatever was left on that blending brush. And then I will pop those up on some strips here. And then once I have the sentiments on there, I can figure out my cloud placement. And so I gave it a half a rainbow. I did end up cutting off a little bit to tuck it underneath that sentiment strip there. And then I will place the rest of my clouds here. And there was a couple of spots in the background that I was not, I don't know, when I did the clouds, I over, overwent some and I shouldn't have. And so a lot of times my placement is strategic. <laughs> like when it rains is exactly over the spot that I did not like. And it covers it up. Nobody would know except for, you know, whoever watched the video. And if you're like me, you lose pieces. And so instead of sitting there searching for them, I decided to do the inside. I figured as soon as I quit looking, I will find them. And that's usually how it goes. So I'm taking that other half of the rainbow and I'm just adding a little mini scene on the inside of my card. It kind of helps tie in what was on the front of the card to the inside of the card. And in little mini scenes like this, I will trim off the white edge on pieces because otherwise I think it takes away too much from like the little frog and the puddle is so small that it would be mostly white. And then I just trim that off and then I will add a couple of little raindrops here. And then I do end up using all of my leftover pieces just making sure that I get them all on the card because I don't foresee me doing a pink rain um card again and i think the pink like the it came with the hearts and so i saw the hearts and i wanted to do them in that pastel -y pink color and that was kind of how the rest of my rain puddles and splashes ended up pink it might have helped that me and nanny made purple raindrops <laughs> when we did our platform pop-up <laughs> instead of blue raindrops and it just kind of inspired me to go out of my normal comfort zone of real real colored things but I guess when the sun sets and it comes through the clouds you will get you know the different pinks and such in puddles the reflection I suppose I end up going over everything that is wet or is supposed to be wet with some glossy accents here it really didn't take that long. It was just kind of a little bit of, you know, I might have, you'll see, I get my hand in it when I add some glossy, it wasn't glossy accents, sorry, Um, some black, is it a glaze pen? So it's got that crisp black jelly roll, it's a jelly roll pen, that's what it is that black jelly roll pen to the eyes that are open and I'm kind of debating going back and adding that to the closed eyes on the big bear and the little bear in the teal raincoat that's jumping because they got really dark when I painted them or when I painted when I colored them you can see the eyelids but they're kind of harder to see and when I added the jelly glaze or the yeah the jelly roll jelly glaze pen you could really see them on the other ones because of the shine and so I'm kind of debating adding those in yet I haven't done it yet but I probably will and then of course no card is complete without a little bit of <clears throat> shimmer or glitter 
And since I withheld doing any splatter on this one on the background, I decided to come in with my, I think it's the Spectrum Noir is it Shimmer Pen. And then I just added that to the clouds and the rainbows. Or the rainbow. I did not do it on the inside. And there it is. It is all finished and dry. And the inside one last time. I thank you so much for joining me. And I hope you decide to subscribe. And we will see you next video.